Hey, Joey. Um, I just thought I would follow up on um, your assignment to work with a graph to, in order to um, copy a drawing and get the proportions right. Because we were talking a lot about proportions. Um, and what I want to show you here is, as I was working on a new drawing of some of these um, these sparrows that are at my bird feeder, and and as I was working on them, it's just like the the proportions just weren't going right for like the beak and the head and the eye and for some reason they looked more like parrots than the sparrows and I was just getting really frustrated so I thought it was time um, to work on a grid system and what I was doing was I was copying um, copying pictures by looking at photographs I had taken of the sparrows at my backyard feeder so what I've got here now this is my tablet and I loaded all my um, I load all my images onto my tablet so I can have this at my desk when I'm um, as a reference when I'm working on my um, working on my drawing so I pulled up this bird and I chose one I've, um, we've got a couple of them at the feeders here but this one is very clear um, it's really easy to see everything's in focus and it's a really good pose that I like so what I did was I just enlarged it and that's the picture that I'm going to work on to try to work on my proportions because even though the head's tipped just a little bit I can get a good idea um, of the proportions of from the tip to the beak to the back, from the back to the top of the head, and how all this this works together. So what I did first was I just took some graph paper and instead of one inch squares I decided to use three quarter inch squares. So what I did was I just marked these off on a piece of paper. I just went along and went three quarters, three quarters, three quarters this way, and then all three quarters going this way. And then I just connected all the little tick marks that I made so that I ended up with a grid. Now I'm going to save this particular paper um, for a future reference in case um, I want to make another drawing so I don't have to do the whole thing over again. So I marked it at the bottom just saying it was my master copy and it was a grid for a proportion study. So I'm going to set this aside so I'll always have this um, when I want to use it. Um, but what I did next then was I took a clear sheet of acetate um, and if you you know the um, the sheet protectors that you just insert a page into like if you're preparing a report something like that um, I had one of those and I cut it apart so instead of two layers it was one thin layer and um, and when it was it was a clear sheet of course and I laid it on top of my grid and then I just used um, a fine point sharpie to to tr trace over so that now um, I didn't have to remeasure everything. I had my master copy and I laid the, the, um, the sheet of acetate um, right on top and then I just traced all the lines over top. I taped it down so it didn't shift at all and then I traced all the lines. So again this is my master copy, this was the acetate and it worked pretty well. It didn't smudge or anything at all so I've got, I've got this sheet of acetate that I can use. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set it right on top of my bird here so now my bird is all um, got a grid over it and and then I can work with this alright so it doesn't matter where it is as long as you just don't shift the size of the bird and don't move the grid now what I did was I took my grid again and I took a piece of paper and I laid it on top of the grid and when I laid it when I laid it on the table I can kind of see through it enough so that what I did was I put, and I don't have room right here to lay this flat, but normally I would lay it flat. I just made little marks where I could see the intersection of the grid marks are. And I did that down the side. And then I just went, went over with my ruler and connected all the grids so that I ended up with a new grid that looks like this. And so this is what I'm actually going to be doing my drawing on. So then what I do is um, I find a place, I settle in, and instead of thinking about the bird and drawing the whole bird, um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to shift this up just a little bit. I think you, sh you should still be able to see um, the picture there. And I'll try to work on the top part of the bird. Actually, I'll do it this way. Okay. So when I look at the bird, um, I can see that I have he, he, he takes up, or this bird takes up one, two, three, four, five, six about seven blocks high and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wide. So then on here I go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the eighth row. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that this is the block where my bird's gonna go. Alright, so this is the, the upper corner. Um, 
but this one I believe one two three four five six seven so just a little touch shows in there so this is that this block is this one here and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to look at my picture my drawing my photograph I'm sorry and this is my fo a photograph that I took so I'm very comfortable with with copying it um, and, and the reason I'm doing this is because I was just having trouble with the proportions and it didn't seem right and the head seemed small and the eye didn't seem in the, was in the right place and I'm gonna do this just as a kind of a study to figure out how big that bird the beak is how big the eyes and where everything goes so we know that this block is this block right here and I see the only part of the bird showing in that block is just a teeny little corner like that so I'm just going to make a corresponding mark here and it's pretty flat and I like to kind of translate this as a sliding hill. If that was a little sliding hill and I was on a sled, that'd be a really, really boring ride. And I'm, I'm not gonna be real perfect in my marks here. I can always go back and refine them later. Next, I'm gonna keep going into the, net, the connecting block and say, okay, well now it's a very boring hill. Um, it just kind of goes up a little and down. It doesn't go nearly halfway up, um, but it does um, reach its highest crest at about halfway. So on the next block up, it reaches, it reaches its crest about halfway, and then it starts coming down again. And it's pretty symmetric. That's a little higher on the right. Okay, and then this one, it's another boring little sliding hill that comes down, and it does go out of the picture at about halfway. So I would, on this block, it comes out of the picture about halfway, so that's about where that block goes. And then the next block, it dives into this upper corner of this block, so now I just draw this one down and over that way and then I would keep going down the side but this is the part that's really giving me a headache so I'm gonna go over here now and I can see that this starts it looking at this block um, the bird goes uh, or this 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 line here on I'll call it the forehead this line here look at this slant this would be a very exciting ski slope or even a sled ride but it's more this is about halfway so this is about three quarters of the way across so that's right about where that is so that I come into that block at about three quarters and then I go slanted 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 above the halfway mark and I end way over here very close to the edge so I'm gonna come down and it, it is kind of a curve when it gets to the edge and then it it leaves the paper about there so I'm gonna make a line that's about like that and like I said I, I would go back and refine this because this is um, as you're going through it may not quite go the way you want it to then there's just a teeny little um, triangle that gets cut off there and then it stays um, it looks like it stays inside this block but we have a curved line that comes down and it comes down about almost exactly halfway and then when I look at the beak here that is above half so I would make a line above half there and go over and it goes past the halfway mark and slants down. And so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out where these lines go uh, um, in, in relation to where the where the blocks are. Now the dividing line between the upper beak and lower beak is is more is on the far is about a third of the way in here. So that's where this line comes down here. And it kind of caves down just a little bit before it comes down and makes that funny little mark there. And then this is over. Now this line doesn't stop right here, but it continues up like the top one quarter. And it takes a nice curve up and it hits about at the quarter mark. And then the yellow part goes crosses over into the next block and goes up. If we look at the dividing between the upper beak and the lower beak, we can see it about a third of the way in from this way. Um, it takes a little bit of a hill, just a little bit into that block. And then it passes into the next box and goes up that way and then what I would do is I can see that there's that horseshoe curve I that goes up into this block but it still stays like in the bottom quarter part quarter and then looking where the dead center of that box is all this happens below dead center and then there's this part of the beak that kind of curves up and kind of hard to look and talk at the same time Okay, but there's the idea of where that beak goes and then this ends up being kind of fringy here because it's not a very solid line. Now I'm going to look to see where the eye goes and it's in like in the top um, le left hand quadrant on this box. So I can look at this box and say okay the eye, if I draw a straight line up from there, the eye is about 
comes down about that far and it comes about that close to that line and always start with a, a perfect circle the eyes are a perfect circle and then there's all kinds of lid the lid and all those kind of things we can add on later okay so that's about where the eye goes all right and it's going to look funny because it's kind of got a hollow eye and i haven't got any shading and things on it because um, <clears throat> then what i would do is i would say okay there's a little bit of a line that kind of makes this lid and this goes around this way and we've got the perfectly white reflection here and then the top half of the eye also has a very light shadow on it and then everything down below is very dark so we have the very very dark part we talked about how pupils are super dark and then this is just a shade lighter here okay so then I would go back and I can see some shading in here to make this look rounded and then some shading underneath that gradually gets lighter here to get a little more of a 3d look and then there would be a sharp contrast here where it's really dark above and lighter below um, lighter below and darker above okay then I would continue on down here and I would keep track of um, this crosses over into this box and it does cut right about in the center of the block but then it cuts over here and just a little bit shows in that block and then it slants down and touches this block about it comes out about there and then I would go over this side and we've got a curve that comes up here and hits just about at halfway cuts that block over but drops down about halfway um, when it comes out of that block and there's a teeny little triangle left in that in that square so you can see how we go we, we would just progress and keep going um, and I would just work on the outline first and then I would go back and figure out which box corresponds where and get some of these feather patterns and things in also you can see there's definitely a kind of a grain that goes where the feathers uh, the way the feathers are growing and so I would go back in and do those but for now I've got this picture and now I can look at it and I can study it and I can use some measurements and say what was I doing wrong before is this measurement on the beak equal to this measurement and how does this how does like maybe from the tip to the back how does that compare from the back to the back of the head and that'll help me later when I when I don't have the grid on the picture and I just want to look back and forth and try to get the proportions right but I can learn a lot about how the bird is put together by starting with this grid because it's very very systematic and it's very um, and it's very concrete with how um, you're you're reproducing it so the picture is going to look um, your drawing is going to look exactly like that is and you can look at it and say okay now I can see what the proportions are and that'll help me do better when I just want to freehand it when I don't have the grid on there the beaks were driving me crazy and so this is going to help a lot um, um, for for getting the proportions on the head right so it doesn't look quite as much like a parrot and looks more like a sparrow Okay, well, good luck with your fisherman picture this week. Um, we'll talk about um, fabric and creases and folds um, next week. You don't worry about those too much on your drawing. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Just try to get the outline done um, of the picture of you fishing. Okay? All right. Thanks, Joey. We'll talk to you later. Bye.